Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank the witnesses for being here today, and thanks for calling this hearing. Um, addressing the challenges of PFAS contamination has been one of my highest environmental policy priorities, as many of you know, and I've had long had bi led bipartisan efforts to address this issue. For example, I took the lead role in provisions uh, reported out of this committee and included in the fiscal year 2020 uh, National Defense Authorization Act, that establishing a clear process for EPA to publicly share information from PFAS manufacturers, processors, and users around the country. To address the substantial environmental and public health impacts from PFAS in West Virginia, I secured language in the fiscal year 2019 Department of Defense Appropriations Act to reimburse the city of Martinsburg for the significant costs involved in upgrading the Big Springs water treatment facility. The upgrades at that facility address PFAS, res PFAS resulting from federal government releases from the base of aqueous firefighting foam detected in their drinking water. I also ensured that Berkeley County, which is where Martinsburg is, uh, was included in a joint study between the Department of Defense and the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry on PFAS exposure in populations living and working on and around military bases. Of particular importance to me is the timely action by the EPA to set drinking water standards for two specific PFAS, PFOS and PFOA. Assuring the American people's confidence that their drinking water is safe is essential. And I've pressured the EPA directly, both the prior um, uh, ad, ad administrator and this one, uh, and via legislative proposals for years to move forward on regulating PFOS and PFOA. That process is now underway, though it was temporarily frozen by the Biden administration when they first came into office, along with a, a lot of other policies that were frozen. So we wrote to the president, and uh, in response to my February 17, 2021 letter flagging this issue for White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain, EPA promptly reissued its final determination to regulate PFOS and PFOA under the Safe Drinking Water Act. So I'm very grateful to Mr. Klain for his quick response and for the president as well, and that the EPA continues to work expeditiously, expeditiously to establish a national primary drinking water regulation. However, as we know, more work remains. I agree with the EPA's assessment that many of the regulatory and enforcement actions the executive branch and states may pursue relative to PFOS hinge on continued research and a more in-depth understanding of the chemistry, environment, and health challenges posed by this broad class of compounds. I wrote to the EPA on April 19, 2021, requesting updated information on the agency's research initiatives in order to inform me and my colleagues. When we can expect the sci scientific data and information required to support regulatory actions uh, and when they will be available to EPA. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting for a response from, that, from the agency. It is critical that EPA ensures that science and not politics is driving EPA's regulatory decisions. While the federal government continues its much needed regulatory processes, West Virginia has utilized its state authorities to take action, led by the Department of Environmental Protection. Sadly, West Virginia has faced the legacy of PFAS contamination originating from both industrial and military sites, the two major sources of contamination nationally. But it is this experience that has made the state government vigilant in its response. A chemical facility in Parkersburg led to PFAS pollution entering the environment for decades and resulted in an unprecedented epidemiological study of the population to identify the resulting health risks. As I mentioned earlier in Martinsburg, on the other side of our state, an Air National Guard base use of PFAS-laden firefighting phones contaminated the Big Springs water filtration plant. I worked with my colleague, Senator Manchin, to secure the nearly $5 million needed to provide the necessary filtration system of, of, for that system after the military first agreed to pay for it and then they tried to walk away, but we wouldn't let them. I know there are similar stories around the country. As I believe we all know and will be re reaffirmed today, PFAS are all over this country with background level, levels of contamination from a multitude of sources. But the actual threats to human health in the immediate environment tend to be highly localized, which is exactly why a deliberative science-based approach to testing and remediation is necessary. 
West Virginia, the state of West Virginia, authorized and funded a review of its drinking water systems, and currently the West Virginia Department of Environment Protection is sampling for PFAS in nearly every community water system across the state. I am very pleased that Scott Mandarola is here as a witness to provide an update on this, on this ongoing effort. While I'm proud to see West Virginia taking initiative in response to PFAS contamination, I'm also aware of the critical need for continued scientific research to form the basis of appropriate federal action that supports West Virginia and other states as they try to assess and respond to these challenges. With plenty of misinformation out there, appropriate risk communication from the federal government is crucial for helping state and local governments and our constituents understand and address PFAS pollution and not undermine the ability for states and localities to do so. I very much look forward to hearing from our witnesses on these topics today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sir